uh, that you will need is VPN. Uh, do you have that? It actually allows your computer or laptop uh, to access the NMSU network. Do you have VPN? You can just Google type uh, VPN NMSU. <clears throat> and then the first thing that pops up. <clears throat> Did you find it? Yes, Julian, yes, I, I got it. Good, great. Now, uh, here you will see a link, vpn.nmsu.edu. Click that. Okay. And enter your use NMSU username and password. And click login. And after it uh, finds which version you need, just click download. I won't download it because I already have it, but it should be just next, next. Okay. And I have one question. If I already have a VPN connected with my laptop, then I don't. Then you have everything. No need to install anything. I thought that you don't have it. Okay. No, I have that. So I, I I know. You have VPN. Yes. Okay. You don't need this. Okay. That's the first step. Uh, the second thing you need to so uh, connect, connect your VPN. Okay. Connect. <clears throat> now go to vdi.nmsu.edu. And this window should open. And you can either install or you can use uh, HTML access. So you just need also my NMSU credentials. You can use online version. Yeah, I, install it. I prefer online that is more sophisticated right now with laptop. Mm -hmm. And it will not uh, make a slow down your system. Okay. <clears throat> Just look. So I have to. I have to go this uh, website, right? Vdi. Uh, Nmsu. Edu. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And username should be like uh, Nmsu or any new uh, like Nmsu. NMSU. Everything is Nmsu. <laughs> And you will select ICT Labs. Uh -huh. ICT Labs, uh, I'll show you. Oh, okay.
Do you have something like this? Uh, it show me ICT labs, then I have to pick, yes. right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh. And then you will search for IBM SPSS statistics. IBM? Yes. I mean, uh, so what I have to write down, IBM statistics? Yes, that's it. Okay, statistics. Yeah, I got uh, Windows, but it uh, give me a commands. It said enable copy and paste. You can copy and paste text between your local system. Should I uh, click OK? Yeah, click OK. Just open this. It'll take time. Okay. IBM. Uh, uh, can you uh, show me your IBM logo? Because uh, it looks like A is double plus C by C plus header. IBM. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like yes, SPS. So no, I don't get that. Uh -huh. It doesn't directly show me anything. Uh, it provide me open a. Uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, Is there any issue? Were you able to open this? Did you get this window? No, this no. I mean, th this name is not inside of that. It uh, shows me um, Internet Explorer, like what I'm looking for. Oh, so, I, I, I'm sorry. Actually, I, I try. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I got it. What I mean, yeah. Yeah, I tried my laptop uh, search area, so I'm sorry. So uh -huh. sorry. Yeah, you can use that. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah. You know, uh, meantime, you can uh, say it about like uh, which part I can use SPSS uh, or what kind of knowledge we can. So what? Because it takes, I mean, you can start it with the general information because it takes time to start. Yes. So did you, you need to get what I have. Okay. Yes, I have this uh, page right now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, now, we'll go to new data set mm -hmm. and open. Okay. So, the first step in doing your analysis is setting your variables properly. And we are going to begin with the blank data set. That's, that is what we just did. Then, we will create four variables and we will use them later to calculate statistics. So, first we will open variable view and uh, enter four variables. Uh, the best practice is to define your variables first and then to enter data. Uh, so if you want to create uh, variables in SPSS, it's very easy. Uh, if you can type, you can create a variable. Uh, so, there are two types of variables, numeric and string. So, let's get started. The first variable I want is ID. See here that type is numeric. Oh, numeric, yes. var numeric variable uh, should contain only, num uh, contains only numbers. 
uh, while string, another type, may contain letters, numbers, other characters. You can do calculation on string variables, even if they contain numbers. So the simple rule of thumb uh, is that you should use, uh, oops, Yeah, for example, here we have numeric variable, but uh, we can choose its measure. We have three types, scale, ordinal, and nominal. So here we measured height and weight of some group of people. Uh, I think we will have 12, uh, 12 people and we put them on a scale. Uh, so this is their ID. Instead of ID, we could use names or whatever, but in experiments, we usually use IDs. ID will be nominal variable. This one with, this is how nominal variable looks like. And uh, its values usually represent categories. So let's go here. Okay. We have nominal variables, we have ordinal, and we have scale. So those are three types of data that we can analyze. So nominal variables uh, represent categories. Some type of category, for example, uh, zip code, uh, gender, um, region or anything, south, southwestern or, or so on, and so on. Ordinal categories have some type of ranking. So, for example, uh, degree of satisfaction among the consumers, uh, preference degree from very low to very high, uh, degree of concern towards the certain issue. And generally, it is preferable to assign numeric codes to represent the degree of something. For example, uh, one uh, highly uh, dissatisfied and five is highly satisfied. So there is some scale, uh, some degree. And scale categories uh, have some meaningful metric. Uh, so the distance between the distance comparisons between these values are appropriate. For example, we could use age, uh, income, uh, how students scored at some exam, for example, GRE exam. or SAT. So those are three different types. Um, here, my variable name was ID. And there are a couple of simple uh, rules how to select your variable name. Uh, number, rule number one, it has to start with a letter. Uh, each must be unique. So use separate variables for so variable names, names for different variables. Uh, you cannot use spaces. And try to keep them relatively short. I mean, the allowed uh, 64 characters are allowed, but you probably want it shorter. So here, okay. oh, just a second. Okay, here I am. So here, my name is ID, doesn't have spaces, uh, it's unique, and my measure is nominal. So enter that. My 12 uh, subjects. Uh, have some 
two types of gender. So my second variable will be gender. I also want it to be nominal as it represents some categories. And I mentioned that nominal variable uh, is good to use for gender. Hmm. Also, since we're using short uh, names for our variables, we should use labels. And label here should give some additional comments, some additional explanation of our variables. Um, since gender, I, I assigned two genders, male and female, and I want to define values. So I clicked here on values, and va value one will be males, and value two will be females. Add and then click OK. Uh, one second, what that is one and label is? One is males, two is females. One is males. Then add. Yes. And I have to um, select is a gender um, uh, row or the ID row? What? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, the third var variable will be height. And we want it to be scale variable. And the fourth one, weight. And it will also be scale variable. Height, weight. Okay. Now, since uh, so we want to comment, we want to add some labels to our variables. For example, uh, gender, we used one for males, two for females. Height in inches. And weight in pounds, for example. Also, you can you can change uh, the no number of decimal places here. Uh, for example, ID, we'll see here how it looks like. ID, gender, okay, for ID, those are one, two, three, four, five, and so on. We have 12, so let's do that. And gender, we have ones and twos. For example, something like this. But uh, since my ID doesn't need any decimal places and my gender doesn't need any decimal places, I can change change it here to zero and here to zero. So data view now looks differently. You see this arrow that uh, changes your label to your code. Uh, we defined one as males and two as females. But if you want to know who is who, you can just click here, this arrow. If you click it once, you'll see that uh, subject number one is male and so on. Now, uh, uh, 
I yes. have one question. Can you uh, another look of, I mean, uh, yes. One, two, two, one, one, two, two. Uh, why you put one then two, two? Uh, those are random uh, gender. These, these data are uh, Oh, I mean, okay, okay. Yeah, I that's the gender of subject one, two, three, and so on. You can okay. put different. So values. two means like uh, that is a uh, number two ID is a female, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess. And I will enter some heights and weights also. Yeah, can you just copy this, please? Yes, I'm doing that. As always, try to use labels for your variables because these labels can pretty much be anything you, you want. They can contain spaces, numbers, letters, special characters, but the most importantly, they're useful. Um, because as a researcher, you will create numerous data sets and it is very frustrating that when you have to go back that you sub to some data that you collected years ago and you have to waste your time to realize what this var variable means. So try to always label it to, so it's easier for you in the future. Let me know when, when you're done. Yeah, I'm sorry. Bye. Okay. Yes, I'm. Yeah, can you just copy this, please? Yes, I'm doing that. As always, try to use labels for your variables because these labels can pretty much be anything you, you want. They can contain spaces, numbers, letters, special characters, but the most importantly, they're useful. Um, because as a researcher, you will create numerous data sets and it is very frustrating that when you have to go back that you sub to some data that you collected years ago and you have to waste your time to realize what this var variable means. So try to always label it to, so it's easier for you in the future. Let me know when, when you're done. Yeah, I'm sorry. Bye. Okay. Yes, I'm done. Okay. Uh, so 
uh, we will click on analyze and then descriptive statistics and then descriptives descriptives okay yes okay okay and when this window pops up uh, we need to move over all of the variables except for the random id number so uh, gender inches and this one pounds so height weight and gender we moved everything to our variables list we're actually mo uh, moving everything that we want to analyze here to your right okay so okay. like three two options. Uh, we have different uh, choices. Uh -huh. uh, I chose. For, I have here mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and we leave the default version and just click continue and then OK. And this is our output. So we have some descriptive statistics. Um, so uh, for for instance we see the we see the number uh, of valid scores that's n for example mm -hmm. uh, for gender uh, we have 12 uh, samples but valid are only 10 because uh, this is how many uh, people we, we collected both height and weight and everything from. We have complete sets of 10 people. Okay. Uh, for gender, males and females, we have minimum one and maximum two. Although this, uh, this could be useful because at least we know that we did not mess up our data. We don't have a code three or something. We just have ones and twos. Uh, mean of 158 doesn't tell us much because it just means that we have slightly more females uh but in our sample so but on the other hand uh the mean and standard deviation of height and weight uh, can be very useful for example the average weight here is 133 pounds and the standard deviation is 13.4 and this tells us that this tells us that about two thirds of our participants uh, are going to be uh, 13.41 pounds heavier and 13.4 pounds lighter than the mean of 133 pounds. So we know what is the mean value now. Mm. For height, we have a mean of 65.8 and we have standard deviation 2.4. And we have some ranges, so we can we can check if, if our data is 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 good. Okay. Now let me show you another way to get descriptive statistics. So we can go to uh, analyze descriptive statistics and then explore. Uh, and this can give you even more details about each variable and more options for plotting and statistics. And I'm going to do this twice. The, the first time we're going to focus on just scale variables, meaning height and weight. So explore and move height and weight to your dependent list. Now you can click on statistics and select different can yeah. you show me the last step you uh, shows like uh, gender and young males and I moved just height and weight. Okay, and it will be dependent list, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then statistics, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So you can uh, you can choose here what you want to see. Do you want percentiles, uh, outliers, and so on? Uh, Okay, we'll, we'll just continue. Okay. Uh, 
now click plots uh, you can select here histogram uh, normality plots and so on so you can have different versions so we want just height and weight here and we want uh, to click OK OK and we have lots of uh, information now this is how our, for example uh, which is height, how height is distributed, uh, how this is for weight, and so on. I just want to do one thing. I want to change my label. Height and inches of that. So you can get lots of information by, by using explore option. For example, uh, okay, median. Uh, Second. Yeah, we have confidence intervals, so lower and upper bound of height, weight, range, variance, interquartile range, and so on. And we have some charts to see, uh, to get a sense of our data. <laughs> but now, uh, let's do a very similar thing. So analyze descriptive statistics and then explore. And the only thing that we will change, we will add gender to our factor list. Okay. And now click OK. So we split our data by gender. Uh, and we kept the same settings as previously. Uh, and this splitting uh, could work if we had more than two groups, if we wanted to separate people by uh, age, for example. But now if we only have uh, two factors, males and females. And here we can see that, okay, this is for males, descriptive. Height for males, the mean value is 67.2. Mean height for females is 64.4. Uh, so there is some difference, but we need, to, of course, we need to test if it is significant or not. Weight for males, 142.8. And for females is lower, but we can test if it's significant also. So let's see how it compares. Okay, for example, for males and females, it seems that uh, males are taller. And it also means uh, that they are heavier, that they weigh more than females. So those are just descriptive, uh, descriptive statistics to, to explore our data a little more. Okay, now I want to show you some simple analysis. Um, okay, this. So we here we will use. So we, here we will use, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to show you how to calculate correlations. And we will use Pearson's correlation. So have you used it before? 
Yeah, I know this name, Pearson Corrosion. Okay, uh, perfect. Ms. Okay. So basically, it ranges between minus one and one, and uh, zero shows no correlation, minus one and one, or one are good. And we want to correlate height and weight. So here, see how our data are organized. Each person has a, has a pair of values, he has both height and weight. And we want to correlate these two values. Uh, we will go to analyze and then correlate and bivariate. Choose this. I bury it. Okay. Yes. And as before, all, all our variables are on the right, on the left, and we need to choose which we want to test, which we want to use. So we will use just height and weight, and we'll move these two variables to the right. And let's use Pearson's correlation coefficient. So uh, here we had 12 cases, but only 10 pairs. So these uh, two cases without height and weight, uh, subject 11 and 12, will be simply ignored. Uh, okay. And here is what we got. So Pearson correlation is, uh, okay, 0.574. This is actually diagonal. Uh, uh, height with height and weight with weight will be correlated perfectly, so it, we will get one. But what we want to see is how height correlates with weight, and we got 0 0.574. And the same value is how weight correlates with height. So these two will be the same. The significance is what we want to see. Significance is 0 0.083. And significance levels under uh, 0 0.05 are statistically significant. Mm. So not uh, and obviously this correlation is not significant. If if it was because it's over zero point zero five, if it was under zero point zero five, we would see probably uh, some star or it will it would be mentioned here in the footnote that it's significant. But here there is no significance. Now let's do the same thing. So analyze, uh, correlate, bivariate again, uh, but uh, we will also move gender uh, as our variable. So we have gender here and just click OK. Okay, so again, our diagonals are the same. So here, uh, height, height, weight, weight, gender, gender is the same. Uh, but we want to see these, for example, how height correlates with, with weight. We already talked about it, but uh, is there some correlation between gender and height or weight? Uh, we can see here that weight uh, and gender have Pearson correlation coefficient of minus 0 0.77 and significance is 0 0.009, which is under 0 0.05. And we see here stars showing cor correlation is significant at the 0 0.01 level. So. Uh, this tells us that weight and gender are correlated. Now let's try regression. We'll go to analyze, regression, then linear. Just change this. Mm -hmm. 
the regression builds on correlation and tells us about this relationship between our variables. Uh, but it goes one step farther and it allows us to predict the value of one variable if we know another. So basically that's okay. regression. <clears throat> uh, for example, we have, we want to predict variable y and the variable that we are using to predict y is x. And we have some linear relationship, a plus b x. And in our example, we can use x as height and y as weight, for example. And we basically want to show this equation uh, what is the relationship between, between height and weight? Now let's go back here. <laughs> is there one is dependent, another? Another is independent. <clears throat> so, for example, height uh, is independent and weight is dependent. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> So just click OK. okay. <laughs> so we have here, <clears throat> okay, uh, besides, this is Pearson's correlation coefficient, R square, that's coefficient of determination. So we have these. And we have significance, uh, regression, residual, uh, total, okay. So significance is 0 0.083. There is no, uh, these coefficients that I, that I will get, these coefficients, uh, are not significant because they are too large. This is over 0 0.05. So if you wanted, so we have constant minus 78 and we have height 3.2 if this were significant we would uh, we would know that minus 78 just a second i need to write that down minus 78.6 and the other coefficient is 3.2 okay <clears throat> since we got these value values that would mean that our uh, weight equals 3. Point equals C, which is minus 78.6 plus 3.2 times height. So this would be our equation that we got. That's what these uh, coefficients are for. <clears throat> uh, can I uh, see that equation? Uh, weight equal to 78.6? Yes, constant plus uh, coefficient times x, which is height. x. 3.21, right? Yeah, 3.21. Oh, plus. Okay, sorry. 78.6 plus. <clears throat> okay. So constant, this constant minus 78.6 that we got here, minus 78.6, uh, that's the intercept and the value below it uh, is the slope of the line that we describe this to. If, if you put it on a, ch on a chart, that's what we would get. So the first one is intercept, the other one is slope. So we know how to calculate means in SPSS by using descriptive statistics. And yeah. now I want to show you how to test whether two means are different or not. Okay. Uh, so the first procedure I'm gonna use is a simple t-test. And for example, I'm interested in variable height. 
and the variable height. And specifically, <clears throat> uh, I want to know if my participants are taller or shorter than the, for example, national average. And for example, maybe we maybe we sample these people from a certain country. And we want to know how they compare to the average American. Or they might have a certain disorder, and we want to know how they compare to the average uh, healthy person. Or maybe these, uh, these are the heights of uh, some children that we put on some diet, uh, and we want to see how their height compares uh, to an average child. So what I have is one group of people who I have measured one time. And I want SPSS to calculate the mean from my sample. Then that mean, I want to compare my calculated mean with some another known mean. And to do this, I have to use a simple one sample t-test. Uh, so let's go to analyze and then compare means and select one sample t-test. Okay, so we mentioned that we want to see height. That's our test variable. And we, we need for one sample t-test, we need just one variable. Oh, okay. And, click, uh, and uh, test value, yes. For example, we want to compare these people to some known average, for example, 65. So enter this value here, test value is 65. We want to see if our subjects are taller or shorter than 65. And click OK. And here is what we got. So this window <clears throat> tells us uh, how, uh, how, how height of our subjects compares to the test value of 65. And you can see that we have a T uh, score of 1.057 that we have degrees of freedom nine, that's actually sample size minus one. We had 10, sub, 10 samples and minus one, that's nine. And finally, we have p-value. This is p-value significance. Uh, and that is calculated from t-value and degrees of freedom. And in our case, this value is 0 0.318. So uh, also here, we see that mean height of our subjects is 65.8. We're actually comparing this mean with some known value, and we chose it to be 65. There are three different ways uh, to determine if, it, if our test is significant or not. Have you already done hypothesis? Hypothesis testing. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, do you know uh, what hypotheses are and how to test them? Uh, both means are equal. Hypothesis testing. Yeah, I mean, it should be, uh, two means should be um, either equal or alternative is not equal. Yeah, for example, but here we're comparing it to 65. So here, uh, our hypothesis, no hypothesis will be 65 equal to 65. Right, yeah. And the alternative will be mean, okay, I have, I'm not, not equal. <laughs> Not yeah. equal to 65. Okay, and there are three different ways to test it uh, from SPSS, I mean. 
first thing that we want to look at is uh, t value. And if this value is higher than t critical, we, uh, we will say that difference is significant. And when difference is significant, that means that our mean is not equal to 65, and we will reject our hypothesis, our null hypothesis. Another way to see this is if we compare our p-value to 0 0.05. We want it to be lower than 0 0.05 in order to reject null hypothesis. And the third thing we want to see is confidence interval. And if it does not cross zero, then it means that significant uh, difference is significant. So let's check that. First, our T value is 1.057. Okay, we want to compare it um, to the critical value. Uh, let's try to find. For example, T critical values, I can find them here. Uh, value, okay, we have nine degrees of freedom, uh, and we're using zero point. 0.25. Okay, we have two tail tests. We want 95% confidence, for example. For example, and uh, here is the critical T value that we would use 2.26. So here it would be 2.26. SPSS calculated our value of 1.05. And so this is not true. This is not correct. So difference seems to not be significant. Let's reach check. Uh, T value, P value is 0 0.318. Again, this is not correct. So it's not significant. And finally, we have confidence interval between lower and upper bound, minus 0.92.5. It definitely crosses uh, zero. It does. So, not significant. Our third, what? Not significant. Yes, it definitely is not significant. And uh, what does it mean? The finding uh, shows that. Uh, all, the, all these three findings tell us the same thing. The mean of our sample, 65.8, right, uh, yeah, 65.8 is not different than the national average of 65, for example. Yes. That's what it told us. So now, <clears throat>
So you measure it twice. And often you will use, we will use paired samples for before and after design. For example, you measure a group of people uh, and then you give them a treatment and then you measure again the second time, before and after. For example, if you want to test the efficiency of some drug, and if uh, mean before and mean after uh, are different, significantly different, that shows us that our treatment had some effect. So for example, another time when we might have paired measures is if we have two measurements of the same group. In our data set, we measure the same people for both their height and their weight. So each of our subjects has a pair of measures. Of course, there is, a, uh, there is a flaw in this example because height is measured in inches, weight is measured in pounds, uh, and I'm I will compare two completely different measurement scales. Um, but that's okay, I want to, I, I have a point. A better example uh, would be to have a before weight and then put people on some calorie restricted diet and then two months later measure them again and see if they lost, gained weight, what happened. But I want to show you so paired samples t test. Uh, and I will put height as my variable one. So select height first and then select weight as our second variable. And click OK. So again, we're comparing these two mean, height 65.8 mm -hmm. and weight of 133. Without even doing some further analysis, we, I expect these two means to be significantly different. I expect to reject null hypothesis. So um, let's let's try those three. I mean, I, I won't use p-value. I will just use uh, these confidence intervals and p-value. Which p-value is, is the easiest and completely, in, that's enough. So, uh, we have our means, we have our sample size, standard deviation, how these two correlate, this Pearson's correlation coefficient, not significant, and how these two compare. So our null hypothesis will be that uh, the difference between height and weight is zero. Our alternative hypothesis will be that uh, this is not equal to zero, meaning there is some difference between height and weight. So let's try that. Uh, so is p-value, is the p-value less than 0 0.05? This is our p-value, 0, 0.000. It's very small. And that tells us that uh, this difference will be significant. Now let's check the confidence interval. Minus 75.9 and minus 58.4. It doesn't cross zero. Uh, again, it is significant. Again, this is not surprising as we are comparing inches with pounds. Do you have questions so far? Oh, no, I just uh, had a question, but I figured out. Uh, when you pair, you have to uh, select two variables, right? Um, yes. Height and weight. Pair one is the height and pair two is the weight. Yes. Okay, and your hypothesis will be that there should be a difference between height and weight will be zero. I mean, there's no difference. Uh, no hypothesis will be weight equals height. Equals height. Or okay. differently written, it will be weight minus height equals zero. Zero, yeah, okay. And alternative will be that this is not equal and weight minus height is not equal to zero. And since the uh, difference between weight and height was significant because our p-value is very small, um, 
that tells us uh, that there is significant difference, meaning that we will reject null hypothesis, that these two are the same. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now let's try another thing. Okay. But pair test, when we have to do that pair test, I think if you have the data which has an effect is before, after, or who has an effect of like a combination, like, um, you know, as a pair. What? When we have to Hello. Can you repeat, please. I don't. I didn't hear you well. I okay. Understand. I said like uh, I um, when you have to do pair sample test, like uh, if they, there is a relation between two variables, like they have an um, effect of after or before. Um, yeah. You know, like what happened? We uh, know that um, example from pharmaceutical like product uh, before use, after use. Then you can yeah. do pair test, but for this uh, height and weight, you can do that, or I mean, you have to. Uh, Here we can. Uh, what I just did, we can use it because we we tested um, same people, uh, different parameters. We tested height and weight. Same I mean, it, it's uh, comparing height with weight uh, is not uh, useful because we knew that it will be significantly different. But you can use if you test it, um, for example, let me think, uh, one person, uh, two, ten people, and then um, you test it, uh, their weight and their, I don't know, size of something, I don't know, a uh, surface. We can check uh, how that, uh, we want some means that, that have some significance, but if we tested two different parameters of the same group of people, we can use paired, paired test. Mm -hmm. Now the third test that we want to use uh, is Now, the third test that we want to use uh, is independent samples d test. So what does that mean? We have two groups of people. In our example, that yep. In our example, we have males and females. So basically within our group, we have two subgroups. We have males and we have females. And we can see if uh, these two subgroups have different means. For example, if uh, mean uh, height of males and females is different or not. So we have two groups, uh, males and females. We measured males once and we measured females once. So that's independent samples. Not, we didn't measure the same person twice. We measured different people. So that's the difference. So we'll do okay. analyze, compare means, and then independent samples t-test. And again, we will move height and weight. These are actually two hypotheses. And we have a grouping variable, gender. So we have test variables, height, weight, and grouping variable, gender, and we want to click define groups. And we have uh, males one and females two. That's why we're using one and two. And continue. And click, okay. Uh, can I write them one, two? Uh, um, my one is not showing one, two. One and two, yeah. Define groups. Now we get a table with descriptive statistics. So our males uh, have height of 
67.2 uh, mean height of 67.2 inches and female 64.4 inches weight for males and females we have it 142.8 123.2 so uh below that is a table showing us f values t values uh, degrees of freedom p values so um let's let's try first for height height in inches so uh okay this is if uh, you want to test uh, if variances differ because uh, but no need for that i, I will just test both <laughs> yeah so significance here uh two-tailed so this is our p-value 0.058 that's larger than 0 0.05 here is the same thing it's too large for height significance uh meaning the, uh, the result is not significant meaning that height of males and height of females is not significantly different it's the same we can say that yeah i mean the hypothesis is, is correct yeah that's for height yeah. for weight we have 0 0.009 and 0 0.01. That's small. That's under 0 0.05. Meaning yeah, it's non significant. It is significant. Oh, it, it is. Uh, I mean, the hypothesis uh, is not accepted. Yes. We this accept alternative. Enough. We accept alternative hypothesis. Exactly. <laughs> so that means that weight of males and females uh differs and we we can say that probably females weigh less than males because this mean is much lower okay so let's try to apply these things we we have three t tests we did correlation regression some and descriptive statistics some simple things but but could be useful for some analysis so let's go to I'll send you a link in chat. I have one question about that independent sample uh, chart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how you realize uh, which one is the female's um, height F test and which one is male height F test? I mean, mean value is here test. in this table. Huh? It says weight males and then mean 142.8. Females yeah. 123.2. No, that the second uh, second chart I am talking about, like uh, the equal chart? variance assumed. Yeah. Height and weight. Yeah. We're looking at significance here. Yes, but this height uh, means like uh, all over, like all male and female included, right? Yeah, height of males versus height of females. That's the first part. This okay. one is weight of males versus weight of males. So these are actually two uh, hypotheses. We're testing two hypotheses here. Oh, two hypotheses. Okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll send you. Yes. I'll send you a link. So go to this link. Uh, and scroll down. Yeah, let's use new drug data. New drug data. Okay, now let's explore what these data are. So we have uh, data on 50 patients used, uh, okay, we gave two types of treatment, either placebo, zero, or one, 
we actually gave them cure. We have age of our patients, we have males and females, and we measured uh, their blood pressure before the drug and after. So now scroll down and you will see new drug.sav. Oh, I made them. I have a problem here because, just a second. I need to use this. This Google Chrome. Okay. New drug data. So we want to test if our uh, new drug actually changes the blood pressure. It's probably for lower blood pressure, but we'll see. The new drug, SAV, download that and simply open it. Uh, I got uh, that link. I went there. Uh, can you show me your... Uh where you have project and data sets? I sent you in chat uh, the link. Yeah, I got that. I, I opened that website. Uh -huh. Okay, like, and no, then scroll can you to scroll new. Up? Can you scroll up that uh, page? Yeah, yeah. Project using a new drug. SPS new drug data, that's the name. Okay, yeah, I got it, yes. Okay, uh, this is our data. Okay, now, uh, for example, let's, uh, we want to see what is the percentage of female patients? What is the percentage of patients that receive the placebo treatment? You can simply do it by using uh, with frequency tables. So analyze, descript, statistics and then frequencies so how many female patients we want to see gender and type of treatment how many people received placebo and just select okay okay so here we can see that Female patients, uh, percentage is 52. So 52% 52 of patients are females and 48 are males. And for our treatment, uh, control drug or placebo uh, is got by 44% of patients. A new drug is received by 56%. So those would be the answers how you get that file open uh do you have that we have another link of that one analyze descriptive statistics frequencies frequencies then then uh, move gender and treatment gender and treatment okay yeah but i didn't fi I find this output file um document file okay and it's open here it pops up okay so we can answer some simple questions such as that one. Hmm. Now let's try uh, analyze descriptive statistics and then descript uh, descriptives. Now let's uh, choose before blood pressure before experiment and blood pressure after experiment. And click OK. And here we will see the mean value, mean blood pressure before experiment was 98.3 and after was 88.5. So did blood pressure decrease after the treatment? We, the, the data suggests that the answer is yes. So you need to play with these descriptive statistics. It depends what you want to, to know from your data. 
Now, let's go back okay, to different data. I will download a different set. Let's use cancer data. That's the third one from above. So this data set, uh, it says, compares oral condition of cancer patients. Okay. Uh, measured uh, and recorded at the initial stage, at the end of the second week, at the end of week four, at the end of week six. And we have these patients divided into placebo and treatment group. And our patients have neck cancer. Okay. Now let's download this data. And open. This is our data. So let's answer the question. Is there a significant difference in patients who received placebo and treatment? It's usually what we want to know. Uh, Significant difference in patients, okay. Uh, since we have two groups of people, those that received placebo and those that received treatment, we have actually two independent groups. That's why we can use independent t-test. Compare means and then independent samples. And for example, uh, which, uh, what describes these patients? Uh, age, for example, and let's use age as a test variable, and let's use treatment as our test variable. Um, no, sorry, treatment. I want treatment as a grouping variable. Uh, so we want to see if uh, our patients, uh, if, they, if, they, if their age differs, and if our treatment was received by generally older or younger patients, for example. So here, uh, the description tells us uh, that zero is for placebo and one is for treatment. That's why we will define our groups as zero and one. Click continue and then OK. This independent samples test tells us that mean age of uh, placebo patients is 59.79. Mean age of um, treatment patients who actually received the treatment is 59.45. And we want to compare this through independent samples test. Here we have our significance, 0 0.95, 0 0.95, that's large. That means that uh, there is no statistical difference between in age of our placebo and treatment patients. Uh, so these, these patients had some uh, Okay, they all had ca uh, cancer, but uh, let's compare if there is a significant difference in their oral state at the, at the beginning of the experiment and after two weeks of treatment. So let's do, so we are testing uh, at the beginning, then we give them some treatment and then we test them again. So we would need to use paired samples test before and after that's why it's paired so here we will move for example initial results and compare it to results after two weeks and just click okay and the results tell us that Significance is 0 0.002, so it's small, and our result is significant. Significant difference okay. uh, is between initial and uh, 
oral state after two weeks. So important thing here is, I hope you understand why we used independent test at first and now why we're using pair test before and after. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, let's try one more thing. Let's try another body fat data. Yeah, use that one. Uh, so we have, we're testing 20 females, uh, ages 25 to 30, and we have amount of body fat, and we want to correlate it, uh, to do a regression actually, to some other things. Triceps, skin fold thickness, thigh circumference, mid arms, so we measured, um, uh, uh, their triceps, thighs, and mid arm. And for example, we want to predict how much does this person weigh. We got some values, for example, and we want to uh, only, we measured only X1, X2, and X3. And we want to know how much does this person weigh. That's what we want to see here. Now let's download the data. So the SAV file. Let's open it. So we'll do simple regression. So analyze regression linear. So our dependent uh, variable will be amount of body fat. And independent variables will be these three, x1, x2, x3. Triceps, thigh, mid arm. And we will click OK. What we got here is high Pearson correlation coefficient, high um, R squared value. And uh, here are, our, yeah, see here significance is 0, 0.00. So our regression looks pretty well. Uh, according to coefficients, we would be able to determine this. Uh, equation. So y is equal to a plus some coefficient times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus c3 times x3. And here uh, y value is equal to second is equal to body fat while x1 x2 x3 are these three triceps thigh and mid arm circumference those are x1 x2 and x3 and these are the constants that go with it so our equation will be minus 32.3 plus 0 0.833 times x1, where x1 is tricep skin fold that we measured, plus 0 0.524 times x2, where x2 is thigh circumference that we also measured, plus 0 0.026 times mid arm circumference. And when we calculate that, we would be able to predict body fat of that person. That's one example. Do, do you have questions? Uh, no, I, I, I'm missing. It's fine. You understand everything. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh,